should be a country of freedom in, it's in, the, in the constitution it's country of freedom one second please america is not a country of freedom but i think you guys should show more empathy uh it looks like a, a like a mob literally i think we should be more kinder we are, we are we're israelite if you say so so we more same, but i think we I've did, i think we've been very kind um yeah just because of oh, questioning uh, make us a mob relax I have a, I have a question i have a question this we're going nowhere with the with this is being evaded so i'll ask a different question y'all hear me yeah we hear you e okay my question for muhammad if he's still present um muhammad's um uh, muhammad's who was muhammad's forefather uh, or the or the arab's forefather in the quran Muhammad, there. I'm sorry, I was cut off. Could you repeat the question? I'm sorry. Um, who was the forefather of, of of the tribe of Muhammad? The forefather. Uh, he's Muhammad ibn Abdullah ibn Abdul Muttalib. He's actually an Arab. He's an Arab man. And who's the forefather of the Arabs? In the Islamic Bible. Arabs. Ismail. Ismail. That's that's the, is that in the Quran. Uh well, do the Bible uh do the Bible? No, no, not the Bible. The Quran is 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 Ishmael mentioned as a forefather in the Quran of the Muhammad? Uh well, the father, the old father of uh, the old father of Arabs is uh, before that is Abraham, then the son of Ismail, uh, Ismail, the the first one to talk in Arabic. So I guess yeah. Okay, Abraham, got you. So, that, so Abraham and Ishmael are are recorded in, in the Quran. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right. Who's the forefather? Okay, okay. Who is the forefather of the Negroes in the Quran? Well, actually, in the Quran, it says that uh, uh, all humans are alike. There is no difference between them. Um, no, 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 Muhammad. No, 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 no. The Arabs. Your, your forefather is Abraham and Ishmael. We got that. Okay. We understand they were, they were humans. They were humans long before Abraham, but it's clear in the Quran that the Arabs' forefathers is Abraham and Ishmael. We got that. Okay. Who is the forefather of the Negroes? Because many, many of our people subscribe to your religion, subscribe to Islam, and uh, respectfully so. So I want to, I would like, well, not, well, not respectfully so, but understood. But who, who is the ancestor of the Negroes so. in the Quran? To ask who the ancestor of the Negroes, you're you're, me, you're meaning to say that uh, the Quran is saying the ancestors of the white people is Ibrahim and Ismail. No, right? no, no. I'm asking you no, who no, the no. forefather. I'm asking you who the forefather. Like, like for example, you I asked you who the forefather of the Arabs are. You said Abraham and Ishmael. Ishmael is the first to speak Arabic, so therefore the Arab Ishmael and and Abraham got you. I follow. Okay. But you, so we, we have a clear understanding of the scent when it comes to the Arabs in the Quran. Who is the ancestor of the Negroes in the Quran, since many of Negroes subscribe to that religion in the Quran? When you say that, it's like you're asking me who's my grandfather is, who's my grandfather of me, and my brother is, and I say that my grand, the name, I tell you the name of the, my grandfather, then you ask me, who's the grandfather of your brother? I tell you, it's the same grandfather. So your question is not right. Oh my God! You no, hear me? Mohammed, no, Mohammed, Mohammed. no, no, no! I, I think you're falling let off the horse. You. Let me, let me ask you. Wait, 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 wait. Before you ask the question, let me, let me clarify. Let me clarify. Wait, wait, let me just clarify. All I ask is a simple question. You said that the forefather of the Arabs is Abraham and Ishmael. I got it. Okay. Who is the fourth? Who is the biblical forefather of the Negro in the Quran? That's all I'm asking you. Not your, not your grandfather, but particularly, but the Arabs themselves. We, you said it's, it's Abraham and Ishmael. Who was the forefather of the Negroes in the Quran? It's very simple, biblical. Who was the biblical forefather of the Negroes in the Quran? It's the same. Do you know, yes or no? It's, it's not. His forefather. It, no, it's not. He it's said it's forefather. Wait, 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 wait. Which one? Which one? Which one? Which forefather? Abraham which one? It's the same forefather. It's Abraham and who? He said you're Ishmael. Trying, you're, trying, no. you're trying. You're trying to separate between the. the, the Muhammad. No, 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 no. Muhammad, listen to me. You said Abraham, right? You said Abraham's our father, Negro yeah. father. Okay, yeah. which son of Abraham are we? 
You yeah. Ishmael, right? Y'all are Ishmael. Which, which, which father is which one? Which child of it is out? Which child of Abraham is, is us? Do we come I'm from? Not sure of that. I will be lying. Okay, that's all. Oh, you're not sure. Okay, you're not sure. I, I don't believe it, but okay, you're not, you're not sure. All right. Oh, right. Mic. Can, I, can I chime in real quick, Muhammad? Uh, earlier, you mentioned you had a PhD. Um, I don't know why, but um, I didn't. <clears throat> okay. Now, there's a there's a so called scholar from your country. His name is Dr. Ahmed El Gundi. Repeat that again, Dr. Ahmed El Gundi. He stated himself that the Negroes, the Negroes are the Jews. Us in America, here, scattered no, in America, no. scattered in the Eastern Hemisphere, we are the Israelites. We are the biblical descendant of those Jews. This is this is an Arab man from Egypt that stated this. I'll repeat his name again. Dr. Ahmed El Gundi. He stated that. He yeah, knows that the sure. Negroes, he said that the Negroes, Muhammad, hold on. He said that the Negroes in America are the Jews. And there are many Arabic scholars who have this written in their text, in their text, in their thesis for their PhDs. They know who they enslaved during the sub-Saharan slave trade. They know who we are. They know who are, this, who are these so-called black African-Americans in America and scattered abroad. So, I, I have a hard time believing that you don't know that the Negroes come from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And you were correct. The Arabs come from Abraham, Ishmael, and Qadar, and whoever the hell came out of his loins. Mute my mic. Was the question ever answered why Muslims enslave black people? And Because I keep, they run around the bush. Then nobody's but, not one Muslim. Yeah, you're, gonna, you're, gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're uh, gonna tell me that I'm, I'm lying, but I wasn't given the uh, opportunity to answer, answer that question. So I told you, you ain't answered the question, Muhammad. I told you, I told yeah, you I'm still waiting for my answer, Muhammad. I told Go ahead you and answer, question. Muhammad. So you keep saying I didn't answer and uh, trying to answer. And yeah, yeah, yeah guess, guess, sir. Go you ahead and answer. You keep interrupting me. So I told you before in the Constitution of the United States, it, it, it's still in that every man is free, but in the same time, it, no, no one obeys that. And black men are getting killed every single day. Am I right? That's why Black Lives Matter is actually going on in the, in the United States right now. And there is Muslims in the Black Lives Matter. So you're telling me that Muslims are is enslaving the uh, black people, but every single one, every single race in the, uh, around the world is, is enslaving the black people. As, that's not right in Islam. That's why you're okay. all going to pay. Who are going to pay? That's right. Who? All of you are going to pay for enslaving God's people. We can read about that in the Bible, too, if you want. Okay. That's so right. I am against, I am trying to, uh, like, fight the enslaving of the black people. So I am going to pay? Answer me yeah, that. Everybody, every, yes, all, all, all Arabs are going into slavery, um, Muhammad. That's what the Bible says. All Arabs are going into slavery. Um, all so-called white people, all the nations are going are going to be servants uh, to the Israelites. Every every Arab that is currently Arab right now, or every single one that their ancestors were. Arab no, people. no. Uh, hey, we I, could read it. We could read it for you out of the Bible. I it, know, I know. I, I know you can read it, but tell me this. Well, no, no. Let me, let me, me let me. Let me. Hey, I'll do. This. I'll do a better. Muhammad, I'll do one I'm better. Not, I'm not. a Bible but, scholar. I'm not a Bible scholar. So reading this to me wouldn't. Wouldn't make a difference. No, trust I'm me, it's plain. It's plain I'm to asking, understand. Look, 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 Re Revelation chapter this. thirteen, verse ten. This is very plain to understand. You don't have to be a scholar. This is easy. I guarantee you, Muhammad. If you put your son or your daughter on this chat right now, and we read this to them. They'll be able to understand it. It's very plain to understand. Revelation chapter thirteen, verse uh, nine to ten, please. Revelation chapter thirteen, verse nine. If any man have an ear, let him hear. Muhammad, you have an ear on your head. Oh, it looked like he ran away, but we'll read it for the rest of the Arabs in the audience. Um, you, All of you have ears on your head, on the side of your head. Go ahead. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. But the Bible says he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. Uh, whether you agree with it or not, it wasn't one, two, three, four, or a handful of people that led the 
um, or spearheaded the sub-Saharan slave trade. It was a nation of people, Muhammad. Um, it's not one, two, three, four, or five people who are in Egypt today, Libya today, Mauritania today that are enslaving blacks. It's a group of people. It's a nation of people. Um, even those who turn a blind eye to it, whether it be your next door neighbor who knows what's going on, who's not saying anything, whether it be somebody who sits in parliament who, who, uh, who are putting things into legislation to make it easy for these sheiks and these, and these other Arabic people to, to remove uh, people's identity from them, that being green cards, visas, passports, so they can't flee. All, everybody is guilty. Every single last person is guilty. That's how God judges. God says, he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. Read. Come on. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Must. So God is not asking. Even some of us who might want to have compassion on um, on a person or a group of persons, God don't give a damn about our feelings. He says they must be killed with the sword. And that's going to happen when Jesus Christ makes his second return. Let me mute my mic. Hey, right. can I, may, may I also, I'm sorry, may I also, I want to be an excerpt real quick. Um, just, just to clarify, can you hear me? Am I coming in? Clear? Yeah, you're good. You're good. All right. Let me read this real quick. This is an encyclopedia. This is on Africa. It says social conflicts. Warfare and headhunting have been social conflicts, both now controlled by European governments. The greatest military organizations were those of the Maasai in East Africa and the Zulus in the South. In their homey, West Africa, women called Amazons formed part of the standing army. Slavery was due to raids of Arabs and Hamites on Negro communities. So I want to make this point clear that historians understand that Af at Hamites, indigenous Africans and Arabs were instrumental in the, in, in the rounding of slaves by attacking Negro communities because Negroes are not Hamites. Now, what I want to also read real quick, if I may, is an uh, uh, excerpt as well regarding what took place after these Arabs and these um, and Hamites got a hold of the Negroes in the Negro communities that they raided to establish slaves. This is a book called Crania Egyptica, published in 1844, Negro Still Slaves, by a man named Samuel George Morton, M.D., an archaeologist slash craniologist, Okay. And he writes here, based upon his cream, based upon the skulls he found in Egypt, he says here, Negroes, the same ones that Arabs and Hamites raided in communities in, in Africa and sold them off, Negroes were numerous in Egypt, but their social position in ancient times was the same that it now is, that of servants and slaves. So this man, Samuel Morton, this craniologist, archaeologist, came to the conclusion based upon the archaeological and cranial evidence of the slaves he found buried or bones he found in Egypt that the Negroes they had as slaves when, during the time his book was published were the same slaves that Pharaoh had in Egypt that Moses said let go of, who would have happened to be the same people that the Arabs and Hamites raided the communities of in Africa. So these historians, these Arabs know, the Europeans know who Israel is according to the Bible. They've known for many, many years. That book was published in 1844. We were not allowed to read it. Now we are. Read my mic. You dropped a bomb on him just now. We got a... Uh... Oh, go on, Bishop. Well, no, that was some heavy stuff. Uh, now, I know earlier there was some wannabe Arab Muslims on here. I'm still waiting for one of these wannabe Arab Muslims to try to justify the enslavement of the black man and black woman. They sitting in here. I'm looking at them. Why don't they speak? Hey, uh, B Bishop, you done? You done with that? Yeah, I just wanted my little rant out like that. Go ahead. <laughs> hey, I just wanted to, uh, for the two Muhammads that came with the two Arabs that tried to justify themselves, uh, Look at Jeremiah 30 and 16, guys, just to go with what Isaac said about Revelation 13 and 10. Uh, you know, they think they're going to be spared if they do good. They join Black Lives Matter and protest in the street with us and all of that nonsense, which we are not doing. That's that's uh, George Soros thing. Uh, read that. Jeremiah 30 and 16. Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 16. 
Therefore, all they that devoured thee shall be devoured. So the Arabs, they devoured us in the, in the sub-Saharan slave trade, and it's still devouring us right now in those five countries that, that were named in uh, the middle, what's so-called Middle East now in Northeast Africa. Go ahead. And all thine adversaries, every one of them shall go into captivity. So it's plain. It didn't say some of them. It doesn't say if you're going to be nice to us. It says every one of them are going to go into slavery. That's what the Bible says. So that's what it is. It is what it is. I mute my mic. Just wanted to get that off. I got some information right here as well. Hello? Okay. Yeah, yeah, we, hear you. Oh. we hear you, E. Nah, he, uh, he dropped off for a second. Okay, can I get to, uh, Deuteronomy 32 and 8? Because if you notice, you know how Christians do this universal unity of all mankind and it's BS because the black man is still lynched, incarcerated at a phenomenal rate, murdered on the street. And then Muslims come with this same baloney about this universal religion for all the world. It's, mus it's BS. They ignore what the Bible tenets state. Read that. Deuteronomy 32, verse 8. When the Most High divided the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. So the children of Israel got the best inheritance, and God separated the sons of Adam. That's what Christianity rejects. That's what Islam rejects. The separation of the races. That's how God always intended it. The Tower of Babel went against God's command and tried to unite all nations and tried, and their goal was to overthrow God himself. America got the same tenet of ancient Babylon, to all come together to overthrow God of heaven. It's the same evil. And many of our people have that, mi that mindset, and if we don't wake up from it, we're going to be lost and doomed to destruction when the Son of God returns. I'll mute my mic. Real quick, did I get uh, Deuteronomy 28, verse 45? Deuteronomy 28, verse 45. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee, and shall pursue thee, and overtake thee, till thou be destroyed, because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to keep his commandments and his statutes, which I commanded thee. So as the bishop was saying, our people don't come out of these, of these doctrines. They're going to die here. But our forefathers, even back then, the Israel had the same mindset of rebelling against God and following other nations and their idols and their, and their philosophies and their traditions. So on our, it says the curses of God that pursued us based upon that rebellious action. I'm going to show you right here. This is a group of people in Africa called Heritans. Heritans. Sing, that's, that's plural. Heritans, plural. Haratani is... Singular. It says, are in a group of indigenous dark skinned Africans inhabiting the parts of North Africa and the Sahel. They are found in Mauritania, Morocco, Western Sahara, Algeria, Tunisia, Libya. These are Muslim countries, by the way. Morocco, or known as a Maghreb, or known from um, ancient times as um, um, uh, Black Land. It says, Morocco, Western, Western Sahara, Algeria, Tunisia, Libya, Mauritania. It said they speak Berber languages. I'm going to get to the point. The Haritan have been and still commonly are socially isolated throughout the Maghreb, living in segregated Haritan-only ghettos. They are commonly perceived as an endogamous, when they only marry themselves, are an endogamous group of former slaves or descendants of slaves. They adopted Islam under the Arabs and Berbers and were forcibly, by Arabs and Muslims, Recorded into the Moroccan army by Ismail Ibn Sharif, Sultan of Morocco, to consolidate his power. Traditionally, many members of the community, them, have held occupations in agriculture as serfs, herdsmen, and indentured workers. I'm going to go down to a point. One second. It says here, it says, regardless of whether they were technically free or not, they were treated as socially inferior in the communities they lived in. Being denied the right and ability to own land, they historically survived by accepting a patron, a patron client serf slave relationship either as domestic servant or as sharecropping labor. Let me get to the point. They have historically inherited their slave status 
and family occupation, because it's passed down from grandfather to father to son, have been endogamous and socially segregated. Some communities differentiated two types of slaves, one called Abid, or slave, or Harriton, freed slave. They're free because they have certain privileges. So these people here, these Harritons, are found in these communities today um, in, in, in ghettos, um, found in Mor Morocco, found in Tunisia, found in Algeria, found in Libya as well, in Western Sahara. These are the curses, and uh, they're also a family linked to them is known as the Nawa people. They were also bought up. They were also enslaved and sold by Arabs as well, or Muslims as well, and bought and, and um, or remain in these lands in the same servile slave conditions that we are brought over here today. We were brought over here in this side of the world. And their population is 40% of the population. There's 1.5 million of them over there. All right? So these curses follow us wherever we go. You, wherever you find our people, you will find these same conditions as God has said, pursuing us. My mic. Hey, let's hear from uh, Simi real quick. Welcome to the stage, Simi. Where are you from? Thank you. I'm from the U.S. Minneapolis. Okay, Minneapolis. Um, yeah, I know you wanted to say, you know, chime in or or say some. Let's hear. It. So I I am from a background of uh, Islamic religion and. When I got to my 20s, early 20s, about a year ago, I decided to leave the religion, but I didn't come up front with my um, with my friends or, or family members yet. And I'm still in the process of learning. So hearing all of this stuff is very, very interesting. Thank you. Where's your parents from, if uh, we may ask? Uh, my mom is from East Africa. Hey, 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 uh, sis, why did why did you want to leave the religion? Um, there is just a lot of thing. I I haven't really looked into the background of it as much because I'm kind of afraid to find out certain stuff. But I'm at a point in age and time and and in the United States where I can uh, practice my own belief. But um. It's just there's certain a lot there's certain, when I went back to Africa in 2018 there's a certain stuff that I've I've seen that kind of made me question. Um, yeah, can you give us some examples? Like, like um, what what did you see that made you change your, your your mind from the religion? Like when, for example, um, like most of the girls go through something called Sunni and Shia, where like gen genital um, mutilation. Number one, yeah, like, like, um, they call it like a circumcision, right? Something like that. Yes, female. yes, yeah. With a female with literally no medical background of, of, of anything, just comes to your house and you know, like, just performs that, and it's just, it was weird, you know, seeing that stuff. And number two is like the way to even like to learn the Quran was like. You had to constantly be beat up, like by a leash, or you have to be yelled at, or if you get anything. It was just mostly fear. And um, recently, about a couple weeks ago, my best friend, her name is Kavicho, I love her to death. Um, I went over to her house, and there was this um, kid. Uh, he was about six years old. Um, he comes to me, and he literally told me that a grown ass man called Imam literally told this kid that he I noticed his eyes were a little bit closer you know like his eyes were not as normal just he was more of closer so what he told the child was that he literally frightened him so much and told him that you're 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 devil like I see the devil in you and this is someone else was telling me this and he literally runs to me and cries like He's scared. He's like, I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm scared. Like the imam says that I'm a devil. Like, how do you tell that to a child? So a lot of things just made me question. So, 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 sis, um, you know, a lot of Muslims say Islam is a religion of peace. But uh, according to you, who was in the religion, that is that not what you saw? I would say the men are protective, extremely protective, but there's a lot of alarming consequences that people don't really, um, they just let it happen. And, know, and another thing, 
another thing. Um, how did the on that east coast of Africa, uh, where you're from, East Africa? How did the religion get there? Um, we were somehow, somewhere colonized because we had uh, back home in East Africa. We we had oil. We had a lot of fish resources and camels. Colonized by who? We were colonized by Italy. What, what, what uh, country are you making for reference to? Ethiopia? Uh-huh. Um, Eritrea. Eritrea. Okay, okay, that's right. For the that's right. Okay, right. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, sis. And, Go ahead. And, and um, East Africa, Somalia, too. And so... Um, you know, we didn't really believe in those stuff. Like when I look back and at what the sculptures we had and the things we had and King Solomon and, and back in Egypt days, we were somehow some way connected. So I don't see how the the Arab stuff came in the way. All right. I'll, I'll tell you. I'll, I'll tell you how. Matter of fact, give me Deuteronomy 20 and 64. We'll tell you. We'll show you how. Because the Arabs... Um, colonizing your land or or coming in your land is all Bible prophecy. Watch this. The book, the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 64. And the Lord shall bring thee, sorry, and the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from one end of the earth, even unto the other. And so there... The, so the, the children of Israel are scattered in all lands right now, right? And there, go ahead. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even so our wood fathers, and stone. Our, our fathers are serving other gods. We're serving Islam from a rock. We're serving white Jesus. With the, with the, um, with the, we're serving Christianity with a white Jesus. All right? Those are the two biggest religions. It says, and it said wood and stone. The two biggest religions. Wood representing the Christian cross and stone representing what for Islam? The Kaaba stone. Right? Those are the two biggest religions on the earth. So this is how you guys now got introduced to Islam is through slavery, through genocide. All over Africa, that's no secret. That is how in most of the most of the these Muslim countries in Africa, that's how they became. Islamic is by slaughter from the Arabs. Right or wrong, sis? Say again? Yeah, that's correct. I'm mute my mic. You want to jump in? Yeah. Um, yeah basically, we'll, we'll go over again. Um, Give me real quick, Leviticus 20, Leviticus 26, verse 1. Leviticus 26 and verse 1. Leviticus 26 and verse 1. Leviticus, chapter 26, verse 1. And I know a lot of the reason why a lot of um the, the Italians definitely uh colonized uh, that part of Africa. They also, and others are people also known as uh, Tigrayans uh, in Ethiopia, which is not too far from Eritrea. It's like right in the same region. They're 90% Christian over there because... um. Christianity made its way into the into East Africa as well, which is pretty much the same tenets as uh, Islam. Only difference is that um they have a a, a, a Arab prophet, which would be white Jesus. All right, Pat. Leviticus twenty six verse one: You shall make you no idols nor graven images. Neither rear you up a standing image, neither shall you set up any image of stone in your land to bow down unto it. Right. So you should set up any, no st- stone in your land, no standing image of stone in your land to bow down unto it. Going back to that stone again, back in Deuteronomy 28, verse 64, about the idolatry, about bowing down to the stone. This is, this is, well, this is a, 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 a rite of passage in Islam as well, bowing down to the stone. So Israel was told... Not to do this. This is a custom that was around before. And you examine the history of Islam. Um, they had many, many gods. They had a multiple, a, a multiple, uh, a, a plethora of many gods the Arabs had prior to, prior to Muhammad introducing it because Muhammad had encountered the Jews during his travels. He was a camel driver. 
he encountered the Jews because the Jews were an omnipresent people during his travels. And he began to learn different tenets and in, 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 in laws and commandments that we, that we brought to his attention in the Bible. And so he took the tenets and customs of the Bible he learned from the Jews and he began to push his own ideology. He basically forced, he basically told his brothers, his Arab brothers, why are we worshiping all these different gods? For what? So he, he ended up he ended up having um worship. Yep, he ended up having them worship with one guy rather than three hundred and sixty guys of the year. He said worship just one. So he introduced the monotheism to the to the um, to his own people based upon the ideology of the Jews who worship only one God. That's what Islam came about. So Islam is basically a Arabic version of the of of the of Judaism. That's all it is with a mixture of idolatry. That's what it is. It's, it's not. It's not. It's not a lie. It's facts. Many Arab writers have this. This is this is known. So I'll leave it at that. Um, I would like to say, um, then Muhammad said he got Islam from Bilal, which was supposed to be like a black man. You mean that? No, Islam, Islam, Islam was yeah, spread yeah, by sure. Islam was, was spread by a lot of black people. A lot of a lot of our people, the Jews, a lot of them um helped him promote that no, ideology. Talk about Muhammad, Muhammad specifically, he said he I'm not sure specifically what he said, but he said he, said he got it from Bilal or Bilal taught him. Like I, yeah, Which so, what Muhammad are you making reference the prophet, to? The Prophet Muhammad. He, okay. the he he said he got it from uh the angel Gabriel, which is not true at all, because he he's not an Israelite. He's a descendant of of Ishmael. All of the prophets were Israelites. There's no prophets that were that um are of another nation. When you read the Bible, and then um even the Apostle Paul warned us about that. I believe in um Corinthians eleven, Ibuka. Uh, unless you want you want to say something, Benjamin, you got your mic unmuted. I was going to uh, back you up with Amos 2 and 11 about there's no other prophets yes, on this please. planet except the children of Israel. Yeah, let, get that and then get um, get uh, the Apostle Paul as well in Corinthians 11. Because hey, Amos, a, lot, a lot of the Muslims say Prophet Muhammad, Prophet Muhammad, but there's no prophecy in the Quran. He didn't prophesy nothing. <laughs> so how he got that title is just by hearsay. There's no prophecy in the Quran, period. So Muhammad is not a prophet. And now the Bible is going to prove it. Go ahead. The book of Amos, chapter 2, verse 11. And I raised up of your sons for prophets, and of your young men for Nazarites. Is it not even thus, O ye children of Israel, saith the Lord? See that? So he's talking to the children of Israel. He's not talking to the children of Ishmael. He's talking to the Israelites. So this is the book that the that the um, Muslims say they they believe in, which is the Bible. They say they believe in the Bible as well as the Quran. Well, guess what? The Bible just told you that there's no other prophets but the children of Israel. So Muhammad, by default, can't be a prophet according to the Bible. That's a hundred. I can jack that, Gerard. Because um, first of all, I want to say peace to everybody. Um. Me and Roosevelt was in the room earlier having to, I, um, I come from the Morris science background, just let everybody know, but we was in the room earlier with what you would call the Orthodox Muslims, and they was trying to say how Elijah Muhammad can't be the messenger because of all this stuff in the Quran and all this stuff. But I do want to um, ask everybody, um, in the Quran, it does say the children of Israel all through the Quran, children of Israel, children of Israel. Fact. So, so yeah, um, there's no co you want to say there's no correlation to that, like, or like can somebody like talk to me about that or something? Because I do that's a serious question I have. The I, reason it says the reason it says it mentions the children of Israel in the Quran because you had Muhammad reciting what he was taught by the Israelites, so that's why. Correct. It, so we wouldn't say the Quran would be for us too. Uh, no, absolutely not. The Bible's for us. That's right. our Quran. So the, the but, Quran after. Oh, I'll give you. Right. I'll, I'll no, give I feel, you. I I'll, you I'll, I'm, I'm not debating that, but I'm saying no, when no, I'm I know reading that. it, I know. when I I'm reading want... it and seeing the children of Israel, children of Israel, all through it, yeah, I'm that's thinking just about making... us. 
I'm thinking because, about all of us in this room, so... Yeah. No, no, I feel you. I'm just giving you a little bit more... I just wanted to elaborate on it. I'm not trying to... I'm not saying you're trying to challenge it or nothing. Mm. It's uh, Remember, the, the Quran came many years after, so it was making reference to a book that came before that was uh, recited by a man who met Jew on many of his travels, like E explained earlier. Um, it, that's like somebody saying, well, is the Book of Mormon for us? Because you have the Book of Mormon that talks about Native Americans being uh, the Israelites, which they are um, the descendants of Israel. But the Book of Mormon is not is not for us either. You understand where I'm coming from? from? Yeah, that's a, that's a fact. That's a fact. Yeah. Okay, so with that being said, I mean, I, I will leave with this. Like, oh, not, not leave, but this is my last thing I'd like to say. Um, Like I said, I come from the Morris Science Temple or Morris Science background, whatever you might want to call it. And what Drew Ali brought to us with that, Islam is an old religion. It's an old-time religion. So when Muhammad um, brought about, it was, it was around that day, 600 AD, the boom, boom. But there was Islam way before that. Like, Islam is way older than that. So... With that being said, that's the yeah, really jack that the Arab Arab made it up or nothing like that. Yeah, it is. It, it 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 was older than that, and they had about three hundred and something gods. So uh, what uh, Elijah did, what uh, Muhammad did, was just he just he took away all of those gods and said, "Well, we need to be a uh, mono monotheistic like the like the Hebrews, like the Jews, and serve one God." So they kept their um, they kept their star crescent or whatever. They they kept their moon god. So they got rid of all the other gods, the frog god, the bear god, the, the tree god, the sand god, the wave god. And yeah, they I, did I, I that's what's going on. That's a fact. So um, I was I was in a room, I was in the Nation of Islam room, and they were saying, um, I, like I, I haven't really dove that deep into the Quran, but they were saying that in the Quran it states that the, these Arabs are the second wave of Arabs. And the first ones was swarthy and darker, so yeah, they're correct. They were right. Called, so this, yes. right, so this is what I'm saying. How could it be? So well, not all. How was situation? Not all black people are the same. Noah had three sons. Do right. you know their names? No, 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 no I don't. No, but no, uh, it's, Noah, it's not the black man religion. The name of the room. So that okay. Well, I'll, that's where I'll the confusion is coming I'll, from. I'll explain it. Um, when we talk about black man, we're, we're, we're talking about, you know, the black man in America, because this is where, you know, we're based. We do know club, clubhouse is somewhat international, but we're talking about the black man in America, those scattered in the diaspora. Um, that's what we're making reference to. Now, um, as far as the color black, Noah had three sons, which made up a whole bunch of different nations, and all of them were black. Um, Ishmael, who was the original black Arab, he had many sons. Um, one of them in particular named Qadar, and the word Qadar means black. So when, when when they said these are the second waves of Arabs, correct, those black, those dark-skinned black Arabs later intermingled with the uh, Ottoman Turks thus and Greeks, thus producing what you see today in Egypt. Um, A little in Middle East. Arabia in Iran, um, all over. Iraq, all over. Mm -hmm. So, absolutely. But the seed of Ishmael is still here today. And they're going to be judged when, when Christ returns. Mm -hmm. All right, 100, 100. Um, but, but here, is that how you say it? Yes, sir, it is. How's it going? How's it going, Bahir? Where are you from? I'm from the United States. I'm, uh, my background is Nigerian, though. Okay, all right, all right. So uh, you are of, uh, uh, you believe in Islam? Uh, I, I don't want to argue from a religious standpoint. Uh, I, I, I want to, uh, I guess I'll start with the question, Islam is not the black man's religion. Could you give some background on that? Um, I, I think I understand so what he means. But, the, uh, background, the background is as a, you said you're from Nigeria, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so as a Nigerian. Um, you believe in Islam? I mean, again, I don't. I don't want to talk about my own religious beliefs. Let me. Right hey, but here, are you an Igbo or yes, Yoruba? Sir. Which uh, one? Yoruba. Yoruba. Okay. Yes. Um, the Yoruba tribe. Um, a majority of you guys were um slaves under the Arabs. That's where you adopted that religion. Um, are you familiar Yoruba? with? 
You know, um, Yoruba is like 50-50. Not, I'm, not, I'm not talking about um, the nation. You're, I'm not talking about the name Yoruba. I'm talking about the religion that you guys follow. Oh, like Ifa? Uh, do you follow Islam? Um, Yoruba is like... Yoruba. I mean, it, it, most, it's of like them, I said, like, most of them... Most of them follow Islam, right? Most Yoruba. No, like no, no, like so. Uh, I mean, you have like some of them that do follow like the traditional, you know, uh, I guess indigenous religion. But I mean, you do have like a, a good amount. It's 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 about half and half. Uh, Christianity and Islam, like not taking yeah. into account the the indigenous. Okay. So so both 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 of you both of those religions was forced on the European the Yoruba people by the oppressors. Um, whether it is European with Christianity, and whether it be uh, Islam with the uh, with the Arabs, you have to go and study the sub-Saharan slave trade so you can see what we're talking about. That's why I, we I, still, I, I do. That's yeah, why we. That's why we titled um, is Islam the religion of the black man? Because prior to you going into slavery under um, under Ahmed. Uh, what were you doing on the continent of Africa? What were you, what were you worshiping? What were you doing? Who, who are you? Who were you? What, what slavery are you referring to? I guess I'll ask. Uh, sub-Saharan slave trade. You want to, when, when the Arabs came and took and took the the people of Yoruba into slavery. Hey, I so, think so. You're saying that people came from like like the I guess the Arabian Peninsula to come to like the Yoruba tribe to take them into slavery. Yeah, they came into Nigeria. They came into uh, many different countries in Africa and um, enslaved the people, brought them over to more of the East and enslaved them. And then, the, and then later on, those people returned back to their lands and they came back with the, the um, religion of their colonizers. I, are you sure you're not referring to like Northern Africa? Um, no, um, Northern Africa as well, but they migrated down South as well, too. Nobody stays in one place. You have nomads, just like you have okay. your people. You have your people today in Libya. You have Yoruba people and uh, Igbo people who are looking for work, going to Libya and being enslaved by the Libyans. Nobody stays in one right, place. Right. Um, we have a, okay, we always so have think, think, of moving around. I, I think what I think. I, so I guess my confusion is sort of coming about. I don't think anybody preaches that. I guess Islam would be the black man's religion, right? I don't think anybody truly believes that, like, oh, like, black people are the ones that, like, <coughs> founded, like, yeah. Islam. Or, I'm, I'm, again, I'm not sure if I'm yeah, understanding you, that. You do, by your own example. I, I believe that the black man f founded Islam, or? No, no. You, your own example shows what you believe, right? Uh, I'm, 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 not, I'm not understanding. Meaning whatever you, whatever religion you subscribe to shows what you believe, so... For example, you, oh, yes, I, know, yes, sir. I, guess. I know, I know, I know. You said you didn't want to answer the question, but, but you know, by you not answering the question, you're actually giving the answer. More than likely, you you probably follow Islam as well. Um, I mean, I mean, I mean, okay, okay. And you being you, you being a black man from the continent of 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 Africa, from the country of Nigeria, from the tribe of Yoruba, by you following um, Islam, you're saying that that's a religion for you. You're being an example to to other black people we're saying that's not what god called you god called you an israelite and god gave you laws statutes and commandments to follow god and god never said for us as the children of israel who the yoruba tribe are the children of israel god never told us to um to follow islam that's where we're in error and we got to return back to god's law statutes and commandments okay uh, i guess i get okay so that's another thing what I guess would make like somebody like of the Yoruba tribe a, a children of Israel. I guess a child of Israel. I guess I ask because they fit the curses. Um, when you read Deuteronomy the twenty eighth chapter, um, what, what, think, what are the curses as ascribed to? I guess the the, the Yoruba people. Um, okay, I we think you get that. You wanna, what could it get Babylon and Timbuktu? Oh uh, yeah, you could get get Babylon and Timbuktu, and you could also get Deuteronomy. Um, is uh, I don't know if Benjamin or ZB Real want to go over that. Okay, I guess not. <laughs> uh, Isaac, I'm about to shut it down. It's long, it's long. Hey, Z, we can't hear you. Can you hear me?
Yeah. You see, you wanna you wanna go you wanna go over that or you want you want me to hear me? We got Hannah and I as well. Hannah and I. Can hear you. Can you hear me? Oh. Yes, okay. sir. Read the um read te- read Babylon and Timbuktu first. This is the Book of Babylon to Timbuktu by Rudolf R. Windsor. Page 45. When Muhammad was born, many Arabs were still worshipping the sun, stars, spirits, and idols. No, get me, get, get me the page with um, when it says over one million Jews fled into Africa. Uh, it's, I forgot what page it's on. I don't have the book in front of me. Page 84. Can you hear me now? Page 84. You're real low, Z. Page 84. In the year 65 BC, the Roman armies under General Pompey captured Jerusalem. In 70 AD, General Vespasian and his son, Titus, put an end to the Jewish state with great slaughter. During the period of military governors of Palestine, many outrages and atrocities were committed against the residue of the people. During the period from Pompey to Julius, it has been estimated that over one million Jews fled into Africa, fleeing from Roman persecution and slavery, the so, slave markets. So we flooded deeper into the deeper interiors of Africa. But here, um, Israel is already on the continent of Africa, right next to um, northeast Egypt, right? So we fled deeper into Africa, later setting up kingdoms in Mali, Shanghai, Ashanti, um the uh, Igbo and Yoruba, Yoruba of uh, Nigeria. We settled in the Ni- Niger. We settled, settled in the Congo. Um, oh, many me. of us, even, and many of us even went more eastward. This was in 70 AD. What Christ prophesied in the book of Luke, the 21st chapter. So when we started to settle in Africa, we took our laws. We had our laws. We had our our constitution. Oh, we're gonna let's continue to read that in um, Babylon. Page ninety. The black Jews had an advantage over the African tribes. Now the African tribes, but here you might ask yourself, who is that? Those were the ancient Hermetic tribes. Like when you hear about the Canaanites and the Pharisites and the Jebusites, those those black people came from Ham. They weren't Shem. They came from Ham. Were Shem. Those people came from Ham. Those were ancient Hermetic tribes that were already um, on the continent. So we migrated amongst them. And and God says we had an advantage over them. Not only our laws, but other things as well. Read. They carried their culture, history, laws, and written records with them. This assured them a constant precedence for a development of a higher social organization. So you see though that word says a higher social organization. Wherever we went to at that time, guess what? We were we were higher people. Remember in Deuteronomy seven verse six, God says the Israelites are above all people. Not only because of first and foremost because of God's laws, but for other things as well. All the ways of knowledge was given unto Jacob. Read. Because of the stability of the black Jewish culture, the Jews were not absorbed into the autocratness population. In fact, the Jews absorbed some of the native tribes. The Jews So at use- first, so at first that's what happened. We weren't absorbed into into the other tribes, but through the process of time, what did we started to do? We started to develop an affinity of the other nations, so we took them amongst us. We married their daughters. We married their sons when God told us not to do that. And through the process of time, I don't know if you were on the um, channel earlier when E brought out that book about how the Arabs and the Hamites um, took us and sold um, and they raided Negro towns and then the Hamites sold us to the Arabs as slaves. So the ancient the ancient tribal Africans on the continent they knew exactly who they were selling. That's why the the brothers and sisters of Yoruba many of them were taken to uh, Puerto Rico. Many of them were taken to Cuba. Okay, which is the um the tribe of Ephraim, and then you have the tribe of Manasseh. Okay, so the the Yoruban people were scattered through the four corners, and that was just that was the transatlantic. But before that, you had the sub-Saharan, 
when the Arabs came in, they took the Ebos, the, Yur the um, Yoruba, and some of the Fulani as well, and then they took them as slaves and enforced Islam upon them. Now, you can read about that. Give me Deuteronomy 28. Let's just touch the key points. Just jump to verse um, 68 and then get me 64. Deuteronomy 28, verse 68. So this is what God told the Israelites, uh, Bahir. God told us, look, if we break if we break the commandments of God, this is Moses talking to us after he um, got the commandments from God. He says, look, if you break God's laws, this is what's going to happen to you. This is, one of the, this is just one of the many curses. Go ahead. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again mm -hmm. with ships. By the way whereof I speak unto thee. Thou so how did, shalt. how did the Yoruba tribe get over there to um, Cuba and the island of, uh, some were scattered on the island of Hispaniola and a bulk of them was carried to Puerto Rico? How, how did they get over there? They didn't swim. They didn't take a car. God says they would go on ships. What kind of ships? Slave ships. Read. By the way whereof I speak unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. What you're not going to see no more again, but here is is your your country, the nation, uh, the country of Israel as a nation of people. You ain't going to see your your cult, your heritage again. We left God took that all away from us for a great dispensation of time. Go ahead. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. Were we sold? Were we sold? Let's take it back to the um, sub-Saharan, which happened before the transatlantic. We were sold, but here we were sold to Arab slave masters in Yemen. We were sold to Arab slave masters in Libya, Tunisia, Algeria, um, uh, India, as far as India, Iraq, Iran. They sold us on auction blocks. Now jump up to the transatlantic slave trade. The Yoruba brothers and sisters were sold um, over there in Puerto Rico. They were sold in Cuba. They were sold in Haiti. They were sold wherever they were They were bought to, on cargo slave ships. Go ahead. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, and no so you were, shall buy you. You were sold as slaves, as bondmen, slave man, and slave woman, and no man shall buy you. The word buy means to redeem, to save, because if you're sold, obviously that means you're bought. Right. Somebody had to buy you. So when it says no man shall buy you, it's talking about um, somebody saving you. No man, nobody can save us from this condition. But Jesus to Christ, that's what the Bible is making reference to. Now, when we were sold, what happened to us after we stepped off the the um, auction and blocks? But here, what happened next? Give me Deuteronomy 28 verse. Um, give me verse 30. Give me verse uh, 16. Give me verse 16. 32. Yeah, uh, verse 16. 16. Deuteronomy 28, 16. Deuteronomy 28, verse 16. Cursed mm -hmm. shall thou be in the city, and cursed shall thou be in the field. After we got down off of those auctioning blocks and we were taken to whatever plantation we had to go to, guess what? We were cursed in the field. How were we cursed in the field? But here we had to pick sugar, cotton, tobacco, um, plantains, whatever the slave master wanted us to do in the field, we had to do whatever we had to do in whatever he wanted to do, whatever he wanted us to do in the city. We had to do. He broke us. They broke us down. Get me verse 64. Verse 64, and the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from one end of the earth, even unto the other. We read that in and verse there, 68 right here by slave ships. Go ahead. And there thou shalt serve other gods, mm -hmm. which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even now, why, and stone. Why would we? why would we serve other gods? Why would we serve other gods right here? I want to know if you're paying attention. Make sure I'm not just speaking, speaking to deaf ears. Why would we serve other gods? Notice what God says. He's going to scatter us. How did God scatter us? Via slave ships. We were sold on auction and blocks. Reread that for you. We um we served in the fields. I'm pretty sure you know the history of slavery. So now he's saying we're going to serve other gods. What would make us serve other gods? So I don't know if you're saying like maybe like being forced to do so. Very good. We were forced to do so. So whatever the Arab slave master told you, if he told you you have to 
follow uh, Islam and read the Quran and, 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 and say Allah Akbar 10 times a day, guess what? You had no choice because he would kill you. He would whip you. He would kill you. And they still do that to our brothers and sisters this very day. Now, over here in America, in Europe, in the Caribbean islands and so forth, and even different parts of Africa, um, what happened to us? Christianity came. So when they told us to bow down to the white image of Jesus Christ, we had no choice. But here we were killed. We were whipped. They used they took our children and sold um sold your daughter to to another slave master somewhere else. They 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 separated the family. They put the fear, they put the fear of themselves in us to where we had to worship what wood and cross. We had to worship their idols. We had to worship their pagan gods. We had no choice. Read that again for him, Abuka. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from one end of the earth even unto the other, and there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. Look at that. Now, why is he? Why is the Most High using wood? And look at that, wood and stone, right? Now, you, let's take wood. When you hear the word wood, what comes to mind when it comes to religion? You think of the cross, the Christian cross. When you hear stone, what comes to mind? What's the first thing that pop, pops up in your mind? The cobblestone. So here in America, you have two of the world's largest religions, Christianity and Islam. That was forced on the children of Israel. Now you got to ask yourself, okay, what happened to the other, uh, our other brothers and sisters on the continent that stayed back, who were later colonized by the Europeans? And when you bring it up to today, you have the Chinese people, and you also have uh, the Arabs as well, who are still colonizing our brothers and sisters on the continent. Read Deuteronomy twenty-eight, the thirty-third verse. Deuteronomy twenty-eight. Verse 33, the fruit of thy land and all thy labor shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up, and thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed always. So you got to ask yourself, it says the fruit of thy land, but here, what is that talking about? What is that making reference? Your first initial thought, you might be saying plantains, oranges, cassava, and so forth. Mango. I'm, I'm thinking children, no? Well, the fruit of thy land is talking about, um, is also going into those crops that I mentioned, but first and foremost, it's talking about your oil, your zinc, your diamonds, your gold, your bauxite. Africa is one of the richest continents. You had um, a president, I believe it was former President Sarkozy, if I'm not mistaken, of France, who said... Um, that France and many of the European countries would be a third world country if it was not for Africa. What does he mean by that? Because they colonized the hell out of Africa. Just the other day, I believe it was Namibia, Germany is, is um, Germany just approved a $1.1 billion of reparations for, Namib for Namibia. Do you think that's enough? Absolutely not. And I guarantee you that money's not going to go to the people. That money's not going to go to the descendants of the slaves that the, that the Germans had. That's the money. That money's going to go to the wicked and the wicked government, those in politics over there in Namibia. So God says, "You shall be only crushed and oppressed always." You know, they even put that in your movies. About a little over a decade ago, there was a movie called Blood Diamonds. We was talking about the diamonds that come out of Sierra Leone. Africa is one of the richest, richest, richest continents, the richest continent, but they're so poor, so poor. What is it, 55 countries in Africa? 54, yeah. All right, well, I say 55 because Israel is a part of Africa. Don't let the white man brainwash you. So from now on, it's 55 countries, not 54. So rich, 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 rich. But why are you at the bottom? Because of the prophecies of God. This so-called white man has been ruling. He's been ruling over you. He's been colonizing you. All the nations, not just him, all the nations that I mentioned earlier, they all reap the benefits of Africa. Why? Because the curses of God are upon the Israelites who are scattered in Africa. All right? He said, we got to come back to the Bible, brother. We got to come back to the Bible. When you get a chance, but here, do your research, bro. Do more research. Don't just follow a religion because your mother or your father raised you in it. I, I agree. I, I've done my own research, right? Which is why I wanted to hear you out, right? 
Um, so I, I, I'm somebody who likes to be very historically accurate, right? So um, just knowing, I guess, my, my uh, ethnical, ethnic background, right, just being Yoruba, um, I can say that there was no sub-Saharan slave trade, right? I don't know if you're referring to the trans-Saharan slave trade, um, but that wouldn't have affected the Yoruba empire, right? So the trans-Saharan slave trade would have been, yes, you have some parts maybe like East Africa, South Africa, but mainly the North, right? And I guess some parts of West Africa, right? That did not affect the uh, Yoruba empire, right? Um, so, so I guess how did, how did the Yoruba, how did the Yoruba get on cargo slave ships and end up in Cuba and um, Puerto Rico? That's that's the transatlantic slave trade, right? Yeah. Now, when I'm talking about the trans, but I, I'll, I'll touch on the sub in a minute. Um, the 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 transatlantic. How did they get there? If you're saying it didn't touch that empire. No, no, I'm saying the trans slave trade didn't touch even, the Yoruba even Empire. That, remember, a lot of those slaves had Muslims and Muslim names. 100%, 100%, yes. In the transatlantic slave trade, 100%. No, 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 no. Before the transatlantic. But when they found the slaves, before they put them on the ships in West Africa, many of the slaves had Arab or Muslim names. Are you saying before they put them on the like ships for the transatlantic slave trade? Correct. Yes, 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 hundred percent. Yes. So he's saying that for a reason. Why? Why was that? Why? How did that happen? So before that, right, you would have had the influence of of Islam, right, in West Africa, right. <coughs> At that point in time, there wasn't the influence of Christianity yet, right. <clears throat> but what you're gonna have, right, is you know, like you said, people are nomadic, right. So you're correct with that, right. Um, especially, I believe the Hausa and Fulani groups. Are, are especially nomadic, right? But you're going to have merchants coming from different countries, right? So some might leave somewhere like, well, I, I don't want to say like Nigeria, right? Because Nigeria wasn't a concept at that point in time, right? But that area, right? Going to different places, right? So they might end up converting from where they came from and they might bring back, right? Because like I said, they're nomadic, right? They might bring back their religion and other people take a liking to their religion, right? And you might've had like influential people. <clears throat> you might've had like um, King Mansa Musa, right? who was uh, Muslim, right? Obviously, he's a king. He's very influential. His people might become Muslim. So it's things like that. So that's why at the point in time of like the transatlantic <coughs> slave trade, right, you'll see people, you'll see slaves, right, getting onto those ships with Muslim names, right, because they were Muslim, right? So that's where that influence would have come from. Okay, but are you saying it's correct for them to be Muslim? Because remember, mean? these are the children. I mean, that's, just, these that's, are the that's their belief. I'm not going to say it's correct or not, you know? Yeah, but these are the children of Israel we're talking about. God didn't tell them to be Muslim. I mean, I mean, again, I'm trying to look at it from from a because uh, uh, obviously, right? You're you're using the Bible, right? The Bible the Bible is a heavily biased source, right? I'm trying to look at a very I'm trying to be as objective as possible here, right? So yes, I mean, I, I understand why you're saying they would be the children of Israel by your standards, right? But but again, I'm trying to look at it objectively, right? You, so you I mean, don't say you mean not by his standards? You mean by God? What, what Many God of the said. history books say the same thing. Say what? That the the Yur the Yoruba are Israelites. What those of the, book says that? Th those are the transatlantic slave trade. Those are the sub-Saharan slave trade, whose uh, communities were raided on. Says that they are Israelites. There's many uh, books. Uh, again, I'm not I'm not sure of the sub-Saharan slave trade that you're referring. Like I I do, you, to my you, knowledge, you nothing like that is ever. You existed. just don't know. That's it. I mean, again, you know, I, I, I study this history, and this is also no, my know, history, right? We know you study history, but you didn't study it to the fullest. And it's still major gaps in your understanding. I mean, again, I think I think y'all are referring to the trans-Saharan slave you trade think, rather than... You think... I mean, because you, there's no such thing as the sub-Saharan slave trade. Before the trans as well. No, I'm not, I'm not saying the trans-Atlantic. I'm saying the trans-Saharan slave trade, right? Not the, not the trans-Atlantic slave trade. And, and y'all keep mentioning the sub-Saharan slave trade, right? That's the what I'm trans saying. and sub are interchangeable. Uh, no, sub-Saharan means below the Sahara, right? We know that it means, means below, but the trade spanned above and below the Saharan. That's what, that's what I'm trying to say. It, it, yes, like I said, you have like small segments in maybe like East Africa, Southern Africa. But again, majority, it was, it was Northern Africa. And you had some parts of West Africa. Right. But like I said, the Yoruba Empire was not touched by that. 
And what what um, I, we hear what you're saying, but um, that's not that's not historically accurate at all. I, I, I'm, I'm what, telling what, you, like it, it is historically accurate. You're not showing any proof. I mean, okay, let me let me let me pull up some sources. Take 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 your time. I oh, will let uh, Bishop Nathaniel. Uh, no problem. No problem. I, I just came back, Carlisle, so I don't know what's going on, so I'm just listening. Oh, he's trying to prove that uh, the Yorubas were unaffected by the spread and forced uh, indoctrination of Islam uh, before the transit. No, no, no. I'm, not, I'm not saying we're unaffected by the, the, the spread, right? I'm trying to say that, that in the trans-Saharan slave trade, that was where they were not affected by the trans-Saharan slave trade, right? So a lot of the implementation of, like, Islam in, like, I guess the Yoruba empire, right, would have been through, like, merchants, traders, things like Because the Yorubas were very heavily, like, trading people, right? So that's where you get the intermixing with other groups of people. And that's where you could have seen the influence of, like, Islam come into play there. What happened? I think he cut off. No, no, I'm still. No, that, that was that was the end of my statement. All right, I'm I'm confused. So he's saying that he's he's saying that the Yoruba were affected by the spread of Islam, or they were not correct. Affected. I'm 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 saying, of course, of course, right? You have like like I said, almost fifty percent of like Yoruba people will be probably like forty percent, right? Okay, right. Oh. But you you have quite a, a significant portion of Yoruba people are Muslim today, right? Also Christian, right? But what I'm trying to say is that it wasn't due to like Arab slave trade. Like it wasn't, it wasn't the trans-Saharan slave trade that, that caused that, you know, shift to Islam is what I'm trying to say. But of course we were affected, right? Like, of course there, there are Muslim people that are Yoruba today, right? All right. That seems like contradictory to me, but okay. So I'm assuming that you're referring to the influence before the sub-Saharan slave trade from the time of Mohammedans? Is that your, what you're making reference to? I mean, I mean, there would have been influence there too, but I'm, I'm not even talking about... I, what I'm trying to say is there, there was no sub-Saharan slave trade, right? There was a trans-Saharan slave trade, right? But that did not affect the Yoruba Empire. Okay, I'm now confused again. You said there was no sub-Saharan slave trade with the Arabs? Uh, yes, I, and, and that's what I'm saying. I don't know if you're referring to the trans-Saharan slave trade, right? That's a different thing, right? But what I'm trying to say is like trans-Sahara and sub-Sahara would be two different things. And the sub-Saharan slave trade isn't a thing. The trans-Saharan, yes. But what I'm trying to say is that the Yoruba empire was not affected by the trans-Saharan slave trade. All right, so this is semantics. You're, you're going into semantics. When the Arabs no, no, no. went throughout, it's, it's not. Under, so we all understand. You're, you're saying that when the Arabs went throughout North Africa and various other parts of Africa, enslaving and indoctrinating, you're saying the Yorubas were not affected or they were? Exactly. The, the Yorubas were not affected. <coughs> exactly. So they became Muslims through osmosis. No. So uh, I don't know if you were here when I said it, but earlier on, right, I was talking about how the Yoruba people traded and, and, and did business with other lands, right? So that's where you would have seen the influence of, of, of Islam in, with the Yoruba people, right? That's what I'm trying to get. At. Okay, that, we're saying it's pretty much similar things. Semantics is causing confusion. No, no. Um, what, what I'm trying to say is that it was, it was, it was, that was not imposed upon the people, right? It's, that was a choice by the people, right? That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, Obviously, the bottom line is like, Islam is a gutter religion. That's the bottom line. I mean, you're, you're, you're entitled to that opinion, sure, right? But I want us to be accurate about the, the facts here. And when I say gutter religion, I mean gutter religion because God calls it a gutter religion. Um, Isaiah 41.21, by the way, uh, in reference to that, and also as the Arabs enslave our people in various Muslim countries to this day, and I don't see Yoruba people standing for or against it. They're like silent. Standing for or against it's a, for, Standing for or against The enslavement what exactly? of black people in Yemen, Afghanistan, Saudi Arabia. That's what I'm making reference to. The enslavement of black people to this very day verifies that Islam is not the religion of the black man or black woman. 
I mean, uh, so again, I don't know if you were here earlier when uh, I came in, but again, I, I don't think anybody is arguing that Islam is, is, is the black people's religion, right? That's, I don't think anybody is arguing that, right? What, what I'm trying to say is that, you know, the, the methods in which Islam would have entered, like, the Yoruba but, but Empire. Here, by, your, by your example, you argue it, first and foremost. Second, of, second you keep contradicting your statements by playing. I, I, I'm, I'm not contradicting anything. All right. Sounds, sounds contradictory to me, and I just got back in. I mean, I understand that it might sound, con- but I really want you to hear what I'm saying, right? Nah, what I'm trying you, to say, you, but here, you, you got to listen to yourself. One day, just I'm record yourself, record yourself, and play it back so that you can learn Carla, what you're trust doing. Trust me, trust me, no amount of scrutiny that, that, that you are giving me now is nothing, is, is anything compared to what I give myself, right? In comparison to, especially, you know, before entering rooms like Yeah, we'll go with Papa. Oh. Yeah, hi everybody. Uh, so, how does this go? Do I um, just introduce myself? Yeah, it's because... good to know where you're from, and uh, you know, just jump into it. Yes, my name is Papa, as you can see, and I'm originally from Senegal. I'm kind. Ca- um, I'm currently residing in the United States as a student. Um, and I just wanted to chime in because I was in the audience. It's a pretty interesting um, talk that you're having here. And um, I just heard like, you know, some misinformation that I wanted to clarify because sometimes I feel like people get the misconception of Arabs and Islam. Um, those two things are very different. Like a person can be Arab and not be Muslim. A Muslim might not, be nece- might not necessarily be Arab. So when we talk about enslavement of black people, of course, Arab people have long done the enslavement of black people up to the uh, birth of Islam. It was actually Islam that kind of um, got rid of it in the Arab nation because they had slaves. And when they found out that Muhammad came with these statements that the master and the slave were the same under the eyes of God, that's what brought them to be chased down from Mecca and took them all the way to Medina where they lived for, uh, throughout the rest of the, um, the days of Islam. So I just want to point out that even to this day, when you say that there is um, slavery in Libya and many other Arab nations, it's not because they do it because Islam told them to do so. It's just the Arab people who live there. That's their nature to enslave people. And everybody knows that that is wrong. Everybody advocates for it. But that does not mean that Muslims enslave black people. It's Arab people who do that. We, I think it's necessary to do the distinction. Like Arabs are a whole um, ethnicity, if you want to call it that. And then Muslim is just totally different. It's just the religion that happened to be born in the Arab nation, but has nothing to do with the Arab people. It's a, a religion that is free for anybody to adhere to, just like Christianity or any other religion. So I don't think religion is based off of ethnicity or off of a race, but it's just a religion that anybody could join if they are convinced enough that this is their religion that they want to adhere to. Okay. I want to point out the inconsistency and contradiction of what you said. You said, although Islam started with the Arabs, it is not an Arab religion. Uh, and that's a contradiction to me. It started with the Arabs, but it's not an Arab religion. Even when you look in Zondervan's Bible dictionary under Ishmaelite, it tells you that the Ishmaelites are all those that practice the religion of Muhammad, which is Islam. Um, so although you have, I don't know if you're a Muslim yourself and you're trying to justify and make excuses. Can we read Sirach 3217? Ecclesiastes 3217, please. Ibuka, come on, wake up. Yes, sir. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 32, verse 17. A sinful man will not be reproved, but findeth an excuse according to his will. Right. And this is what I noticed with Muslims and Christians. Just as black Christians try to justify or ignore the atrocities put upon black people today, I see Muslims do the same thing when it comes to that religion 
that they're in. They make excuses. They try to justify. They run around the bush. That's what we've been seeing all night. I'll mute my mic. Can I respond to that? Oh, let Isaac jump in. All right. Uh, he, he could go ahead. I want to hear his response first. Okay, so it sounds like he didn't hear me, that I'm not justifying any acts of, that people are doing. I just want to make the distinction of Muslims and Islam. So he said that people from Ishmael are often called the Muslims. That's because Ishmael is one of the forefathers of Arab people. So like, if all Arabs converted to the, to Islam, that makes sense that you say that um, people from Ishmael became Muslim because they are the Arab people. If you uh, follow their lineage all the way to Abraham. That's where Arab people came from. And um, we're not, again, we're not trying to justify anything. I heard somebody said that um, they left Islam, which anybody is free to do so. And the explanation they gave was said that we Muslims in East Africa do something called Sunni and Shia, and that's the excision of uh, female geni um, genitals, which is absolutely wrong. Because Sunni and Shia actually means two groups that are within Islam, within the Muslim community. Sunni was the ones who followed the, the first caliphate of the Prophet Muhammad Abu Bakr. And Shia are the people who follow Ali, who was the cousin of the Prophet Muhammad. So those two, she called um, the excision of female genitals Sunni and Shia, which is completely wrong. And the excision of genitals is not a practice that has been introduced by Islam. It is cultural. It is cultural in many, many nations. It has nothing to do with Islam. Justified? Does this mean now that you're justified? I'm not justifying. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead, please. No, I'm just saying you, 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 you're bringing out where uh, that young lady was uh, in error if she was in error, you know, but um, you still haven't addressed the topic. Islam, is it the black man's religion? Now, you, by your example in following it, you're it clear that it is the black man's religion according to your belief and your actions and your example that you're following. Now, I'm going <coughs> to let you jump in real quick. Well, it, you know what doesn't make sense to me is that the... The, the trans-Saharan or sub-Saharan, however you want to title it, based on direction or where the ships came from, where they disembarked and where they landed, it's still the Muslim slave trade because the men, the Arab men that were on those boats and who enslaved us followed a religion called Islam. And today in Libya, Yemen, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, and different parts of the East, our people are being enslaved by Arab men who follow a religion called Islam. So all fingers, not one, not two, but all 10 fingers point to Islam. So we have brothers who are following that religion, who were, um, whose ancestors, that religion was beat into their backs via sub-Saharan, via trans-Saharan, whatever you fancy name you want to title it. That's not what God gave you. That's the point that we're getting into. God called us Israelites. Um, the brother on here, he said he was from, um, uh, was it was in Cape Verde. It was something else. There was another name you said. The brother that was just speaking, where did you say you were from? I'm from Senegal. Senegal. A majority of our brothers there, especially uh, uh, those of the Bantu, a majority of our brothers there were taken into, were taken into slavery. We're taken yeah, into captivity. Senegal is about 2% Bantu. A lot of the slave ships, but the, I'm, I'm pretty sure they're intermingled with the other tribes. It's not just Bantu. God says we make up the sand of the sea. Those slave ships left Senegal and came over, over um, to, onto this side. Those slave ships left Senegal and went more eastward. God scattered us everywhere. So what we're saying is we have black people we have black people who are following that religion, who is holding holding on to Islam wholeheartedly, and that is not what God gave us. That's for Ishmael. That's for the Arab man. That's what we're saying. Um, okay, so just to respond to that, you're saying that uh, some black people was um, put on a boat and taken eastward. I Many. Many I nuts. believe that is a uh, misinformation because that trans-Saharan 
slave trade or sub-Saharan slave trade couldn't have happened through the sea. It had it was land. They had many camels of, and stuff and caught prisoners from wars and made them many, slaves. Many and, of it was meant you had boats and you also did have land. You're, you're correct on that. I'm not saying you're wrong. Right. You are correct. Right. But like where, where did the boats land and boat. where did the boats sail? Through the Saharan uh, desert? No, the boats didn't sell through the Saharan desert. You had your foremother, your great great grandmother was mm -hmm. taken, dragged, and put on a damn donkey or carriage mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. or chariot and brought mm -hmm. over there eastward to serve the Arab man. And right. now and now here you are in Senegal worshiping the religion of the Arabs. That's what you're doing. So you you're a, okay. You have been a you have been a, a perfect slave for the mm -hmm. Arabs, and mm -hmm. now you're reverences reverencing his religion. Right. That's it. Just right. just all you got to do just just admit. Look, I've, I'm 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 Islam, and this is what I love. This is what I'm gonna die in, and that's it. I mean, but let all me you just do point something it. out because somebody yeah. said Muhammad is not a prophet. Wait, wait, wait. Just wait. one second, please. He's just got, thirty got, seconds. Got, thirty seconds. No, 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 I'm done. Hold on, hold on. Call go it. ahead, go ahead, call. It. Thirty seconds, and I'm going to read an excerpt. Ahead. I'm going to read an excerpt real quick, okay? Oh, okay. And then I ahead, want you to, and I want you to say what you're going to say about Muhammad being a prophet, please. Yeah, Stop. like thirty seconds, and I'll be done for sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. go ahead. All in respect, of course. So, can I go ahead or go, go, go? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. So, I heard somebody said that Muhammad was not a prophet because there is no prophecy in the Quran. So that's where the misunderstanding comes from. The Quran is not Muhammad's word. This is God's word. So we cannot um, judge Muhammad, his prophecy of the Quran. He just transmitted what was transmitted to him. Now, his prophecies come in the Hadith, what he was telling to the scholars, the Muslim scholars of those times, and they recorded it. And these words are very separate from the Quran. You can see all those prophecies in the Hadith. But the Quran is God's words exactly. And I wonder if you all read the Quran because... You know, like about 80% of the people that the uh, that God was talking to in the Quran are the Israelite people. So if I, I don't, I'm not sure if you read it, but from what I'm hearing right now, I don't think many of you read it. And I think that if you want to contradict a religion, it is maybe good to do some research and look what they're into. Because if you don't know what they're talking about, you won't be able to contradict them. Hey, Papa, you've been saying incorrect stuff the entire time. And you Go ahead. To Tell me what's incorrect in what I said. Wait, wait, you have the nerve to assume that we haven't checked these things out? I didn't I'm, assume. I said I do not believe. Wait, wait, wait. It wasn't I'm a fact. Read, it's just my belief. Read an excerpt really quick. And this is on history.com, right? Now, this is widely known information. Now, it says enslaved people brought to the United States represented about 3.6% of the total number of Africans transported to the new world, all around 388,000 people, considerably less than the number of transported to the colonies in the Caribbean, included more than 1.2 million to Jamaica alone, or to Brazil, 4.8 million. Of those Africans who arrived in the United States, nearly half came from two regions, Senegambia, the area comprising the Senegal and Gambia rivers and the land between them, or today's Senegal, Gambia, Guinea-Bissau, and Mali, and West Central Africa, including what is now Angola, Congo, the Democratic Republic of Congo, and Gabon. The Gambia River, running from the Atlantic into Africa, was a key waterway for the slave trade at its height. About one out of every six West African enslaved people came from this area. Right. I don't see what has to do with Islam, but yeah, that is correct. All the information you said is correct. Oh, you're saying correct because uh, you're saying it's correct, but that's not what you were saying before. You said otherwise no i'm so we're talking about islam here so we're not talking about the translation that up, has nothing to do with islam I'm, I'm, I'm making a point that everything is saying is incorrect how how though like okay i don't get it but sure <laughs> because you, I, i'm talking about arabs and muslims you're talking about the atlantic 
Um, Nathaniel unmuted. Let's hear Nathaniel. Okay. Uh, <laughs> hey, I heard Papa say, or Papa or somebody else, somebody, they know that the Arabs come from Ishmael. Uh, so let's ask them the same question. Who did the Because Papa looks Negro to me, if that's a, his picture. Who did yeah, the Negroes, I am Negro, yeah. Okay, who did the Negroes come from according to uh, uh, your belief system? Who do we descend from? The Negroes came from Noah. Noah had three sons. Let's let's um, be more four to be exact. Actually, let's go back during the time of Abraham. Let's go back to the time of Abraham. Let's start there. If Ishmael came from Abraham, where did the Negroes come from? Negroes existed in the time of Abraham. What were our name? What you said? Why they existed? What? They what? they're what not, they're not from Abraham. Okay, who were we? What was our biblical or or is or Quranic name that we can research? You can find Negroes in all of those nations because God divided us into nations. So in the Israelites, you can see um, Negroes there. When you went to Arabia back to the time of Prophet Abraham, you can find Negroes there. So black people have existed all throughout the biblical and Quranic stories going out. So I don't understand why you want Negroes to come from like a specific prophet, but okay. like they existed along with the prophet. That. Okay, number one, Papa. Negro, the word Negro is a Latin word. I think we can all agree on that. It means black. Right. right. What is our name in the biblical or Quranic text? And who's our forefather? Again, our forefather is Noah. We all came from Noah. And okay, which son? Which son do we come from? So I could trace it. Who? We came from Sham, uh, according to the Quran, but you all say we came from Ham, but I'm not going to argue upon that because you have your text, we have our text. So, But uh, uh, according to the Quran, we came from Sham. Wait, according to the Quran, Ishmael came from Sham. Who did the Negro come from? Yeah, Ishmael, Ishmael came from Sham. Like, of, Ishmael come, came from Sham. Yeah, like the Negroes came from Sham. Like, so <laughs> I don't understand your question, really. Like... Okay, we do come from Shem, but what I want everyone in the group to hear, they can identify the Arabs. They say the Arabs come from Ishmael, comes from Abraham. But notice that these black wannabe Muslims, they cannot identify themselves in their religions. That's why it's very, it's, any of us, our people listening, there's over a thousand people in this room, come out of Islam. It's gutter. It's not for us. Hear the confusion of these so-called Muslims. I'm my mind. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm actually hearing confusion also, but sure. Because I, I noticed that every time I try to answer the question going towards the Muslim, Papa. I hear again the transatlantic slave Papa. trade. It has nothing to Papa. do with it. We need to Papa. be consistent. Papa. Okay, Isaac, go ahead. Papa, Papa. Where do you come from? That's what that's what um that's what the bishop is asking you. Where do you come from? You say, you know that the Arabs come from okay, Abraham had a few sons, right? Out of Abraham's sons, where do the Arabs come from? Most Arabs, yeah, come from Ismail, I would say. Okay. Okay. Out of Abraham's sons, where do you come from? So if you ask me that question, like out of Abraham's sons, it means like at some point in this world, there was only Abraham and his sons. That's what you're trying to tell me right now. Duh. Which is not that true. Was a, that was a horrible right. answer. Yeah. Okay. yeah, that is not true at all. Abraham Papa. was here with other nations all along. Okay, so what nation, the other nations that were here, where do you come from? You being a where Negro. I come from being a Senegalese person in Senegal, we came from the migrations of the Egypt, like from Egypt, all the way to Senegal. So, and are you saying can, that we're, we're, e we're Egyptians? We're so, are, are we Egyptians? Egyptians? Are we, we are. Nubians? Are we, we are. Sabians? So, we're, we're, which one? Sabians, Ethiopians, Egyptians? Which one? 
we are Nubians. No, we're not Nubians. As far as I know, from all uh, in West That's Africa, incorrect. Senegal, and you can I have references. I don't know if you know about Shia Antajob. If you did some research about all this uh, migration of black people, you know where um, how he traced it back. And he is one of the Papa. most renowned black anthropologists. Papa. But you will not hear, hear his name Papa, just because he's nu- African. We're not, we're not Nubians. We're not Egyptians. We're not Sabians. We're not Canaanites. We are Israelites. We descend out of Isaac. You are not. We descend out of Isaac. You, Isaac, are not. If you hey, deny so Isaac, you deny uh, Israel, you deny there, Isaac. There it is. There it is right there. You might have a little bit of ham in you somewhere, too. So how do you know? You say... You say we are not, we don't come from Isaac. What is the proof? What proof do you have that we don't come from Isaac? I'm not that the Negroes you. don't come from Isaac. I'm that saying, the new, Negroes are Nubians. Hey, the first answer he gave, he said earlier, if y'all remember, he said we come from Shem. And I said, well, that's correct. We come from Shem. Mm-hmm. Then he said we come from Egypt. So he's Egypt, confused. Was, Egypt was Ham. So that lets me know right there, this brother, Papa, Papa Doc, I'm gonna call him. Papa Doc is confused. You jumped from one nation to another. You said we're Shem. Then, in the same breath, no more than five minutes later, you said we're Ham because you said we come from Nub. We're Nubians. We're Egyptians. That's the sons of Ham. So, which one is it? Which one are you gonna stick with? All I'm telling you is that you're saying we're Isaac. We come from Isaac, and I'm saying. <laughs> Denying Ismail wouldn't help someone who comes from Isaac because at the base they come from the same person. My Man, what guys might be worse. Bro, yep, Isaac bro, and Ismail come from the same person. They were both is uh, Abraham's yeah, sons. But they're, okay, but they're, they're so two, they made you, two. They made two the different. Come from? They made two different nations. You should know that. So are you saying that Isaac was an Arab? Because the Ishmael is Arab, right? So are you saying Isaac Ish- was Arab? Ishmael Arabs? was not Arab. The concept of being an Arab didn't exist back when Ishmael existed. Hey, so pa- Papa Doc, so let me ask you this question, Papa. So the white man in Israel, are those the Jews, the Israelites? Yes or no? You asked me if the white men in Israel, are those the Israelites? Correct. That's my question. Okay, the Israelites are a whole nation. They're not comprised of only black people or only white people. They're a whole nation. Any race could have emerged from the Israelites from the standpoint that we learned it from. Nah. Okay, how can we identify them today according to scripture? How can we identify them? We identify them as the people who follow the religion that their um, forefathers brought in. Wrong. All right. Wrong. If you want, we want to say wrong, wrong. Okay. Wrong. Ubuku. Ubuku. Wake up. Do me a favor. <laughs> Let's read Deuteronomy 28, 15, when Moses spoke to the Israelites on the continent of Africa. I, I can't take these Islamic lies. I can't take it. I have to go to the scriptures. Come on, Ubuku. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So the first thing we need to identify or understand, Moses on the continent of Africa is telling the 12 tribes of Israel, if you break God's commandments, these are the curses that will come upon you. Let's read some curses. Verse 32, please. Verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thine eyes shall look and fill with longing for them all the day long, and there shall be no might in thy hand. So the Israelites will go into slavery and have no power, no economic power, no military power, no political power. No power means no power. Verse 37, please. Verse 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations, whether the Lord shall lead thee. So the Israelites would lose their identity. To become a proverb and a byword means your identities would be changed. You would no longer be called the Jews. You would no longer be called the Israelites. Verse 42, please. Verse 42. 
all thy trees. And 41, 41. Thy, I'm sorry, 41. Verse 41. Thou shalt beget sons and daughters, but thou shalt not enjoy them, for they shall go into captivity. Mm, so the Israelites, again, will go into slavery. Verse 48. Verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thy enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. So our enemies, which were the Portuguese, the Spanish, the French, the Germans, the English, the British, America, they entered the coast of Africa and they controlled the food industry, water industry, clothing industry, and they put yokes of iron on the Israelites' necks. And remember, the Israelites would lose their identity. Verse 68, please. Verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. The word Egypt, the word Egypt is Greek. It means house of bondage when you read Exodus 20, verse 2. Egypt is a Greek word synonymous for house of bondage. Read it again. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Now you gotta ask who went into Egypt, who went into slavery with ships? Go ahead. By the way whereof I speak unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women, and no man shall buy you. So the Bible identifies how to identify the Israelites. They were going to slavery. They would lose their identities. They would have yokes of iron on their neck. They were going to slavery on ships. Oh, I forgot verse 64. How could I forget that? I'm sorry. Verse 64. Verse 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from one end of the earth even unto the other, and there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. So you had the Arabs coming with the, uh, what do you, whether you call it sub-Sahara, trans-Sahara, I don't give a damn Sahara. The Arabs had a part in that. Then the white man came with the transatlantic and enslaved us. So some of us started to worship the white man as Jesus. Another group of us worshiped Islam. This did not happen to all people on the planet Earth, because I know there's going to be a, a moron right now saying, well, that happened to everybody. Everybody did not lose their identity. Everybody did not go into slavery on ships. Everybody's sons and daughters didn't go into slavery. Everybody did not have yokes of iron on that. So before you come with that lie, I need you to think about history, please, to identify the children of Israel today. I'll mute my mic. I got something, if I may. Can you hear me? Let me show you something yep. clear. All right, very good. Um, I want to read something real quick. One second. All right, it says the first people from present day Senegal arrived in modern in the modern the first people from present day Senegal arrived in the modern United States arrived as slaves from several ports of Senegal. The Senegambia area, modern Senegal, Gambia, Bissau, Guinea, was an important slave trade during the 17th, 18th, 19th centuries, both for the United States and Latin America, exporting many slaves to the Americas from Senegal. Give me a minute. Um, let me see. One second. Uh, most of Senegal slaves were imported to South Carolina, Georgia, and Gulf Coast, highlighting the, his number in Louisiana followed mainly by Virginia and Maryland. These places had thousands of slaves from present-day Senegal, being a significant minority in the slave population of there, although slaves from the Gambia were more numerous. Okay, so now, so the Senegal, people of Senegal were brought over here as slaves. Now, we'll read something real quick. This says a book written over here called The Black Image of the White Mind. It says the racial significance of Egyptian tomb inscriptions. We mentioned that we are Egyptians. So this is a man by the name of Samuel Morton. He was a craniologist. He studied the skulls of the Egyptians or Nubians and the skulls of Negroes. He says in Crania Egyptica, published in 1844, Morton, Samuel Morton, pointed out that both cranial and archaeological evidence showed that the Egyptians were not Negroes. So Egyptians are not Senegalese people as abolitionists and colonizationists had maintained, as slave owners thought, and that, in fact, blacks had been relegated to the same servile position 
in ancient Egypt as in modern America when that book was published in 1844. The same slaves that were slaves in Egypt were the same slaves they had here in the Americas, which were the same slaves in Egypt that Moses said to let go to Pharaoh. Now, one more. I'm going to read another book real quick. It says here, at the time of the Muslim Arab conquest, the majority of the Jews were still engaged in agriculture and manual labor as slavery. Farmers, however, had a wretched time under Arab rule. And the remnants of the ancient agricultural peoples in the Middle East, Jews, died out. That is, they lost their identity in Islamic times. So that is the reason why that goes back to the bitch said earlier about bywords and proverbs. So during Arab rule, when Israel fell under um, Islamic rule, we lost our identity. And everybody became Muslim. No longer were we just Jews and Israelites. Everybody was a Muslim. It's like today. Everybody is a Christian. Everybody is a Christianity. It doesn't matter what race you are. We're all children of God. Muslims say we're all children of Abraham. It's the same old semantical garbage. But under Arab Muslim rule, the Jews lost their identity. And were, but eventually were sold into the hands of the Portuguese by also along with the indigenous Africans. They helped sell the Senegalese at these slave ports to the Portuguese and other colonizers and brought them to this side of the world. But by the time they came over here as Muslims, the identity was already lost during the time of Arab Muslim rule. Give me my mic. Let's go with Pearl. Hello, hello everybody. My name's Pearl and I'm currently in Leeds, England, but I'm originally from Zimbabwe. I wanted to ask if you could point me to any scriptures that could answer the question that I have on marriage as a woman that's trying to live a life guided by the Bible with a Muslim man or a man of a different faith to you. Yes, get uh, Corinthians 6 and 14, please. I'll, I'll answer that. Some of our sisters have married men of other religions, and the Bible does discuss that. Read that. Abuka. Yes, sir. Come on. Second Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion have light with darkness? So, the Bible teaches us not to do that. When we marry people of other faiths, the Bible forbids us to do that. And some of us, unfortunately, have found ourselves in such a dilemma. And it causes turmoil in the home, confusion in our children, and disputes sometimes between the husband and the wife, especially if one becomes more devout or extreme in their religion. Okay, and that's where the problem comes. So God was telling the Israelites, our people, our people from Zimbabwe included, not to marry people of other faiths, because that's where confusion comes. I'll mute my mic. Um, that, that sort of answers my question. And um, I just, I've got another question as well. Um, obviously, I do understand what you've just stated. Um, I read somewhere in the Bible, I think it's 1 Corinthians chapter 7, um, verses 12 to 16, where it speaks of like um, non-believers, like if you're a man and you marry an unbeliever and they're willing to like stay with you, then they should, you should allow them. Could you just like expand a little further on that? Yes, ma'am. Let's get that Ibuku. Wake up, Ibuku. Give me that. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 12. But to the rest speak I, not the Lord. When it says, any, when it says the rest speak I, not the Lord, meaning there's no law you can find in the Old Testament in such cases. That's what he says, the rest speak I. So the Lord allowed Paul to say such things. Go ahead. If any brother hath a wife that believeth not, and she be pleased to dwell with him, 
let him not put her away. Okay, let's let's deal with that. If I have a wife, right? Let's say I'm an Israelite. My wife does not believe, but she's pleased to dwell with me. Let's say my wife is accustomed to uh, Christmas, if she's a Christmas, if she's a Christian, or Ramadan, if she's a Muslim. And I'm saying, listen, hon, we're the Israelites. We're not to follow Christmas. We're not to follow Ramadan. That's not for our people. That's not what not, that is what God did not ordain. And she says, you know what? Although, although I do not believe in what you believe, I love you. And I want to keep this marriage together because I love you. So I'm going to do as you say. I'm not going to celebrate Ramadan. I'm not going to celebrate Christmas or Easter. I'm going to celebrate what you're showing me in the biblical text. And right now, I'm telling you, I don't believe it. But I love you. So that's the context Paul is saying. If she be pleased to dwell with you. Thank you. That um, answers my question. Okay, okay. We'll close off with... Uh... Top, top. Oh yeah, I was just going to come up here and speak on uh, the Yoruba man that came here and lied that um, that Islam had not uh, that Islam had not to do with uh, slavery had not to do with uh, Yoruba people becoming becoming Muslims. But I think the topic has changed, so I don't know if you still want to respond to that. So if you had a you had a statement, let's hear it real quick. Okay, so uh, there's a man called uh, Utman Danfodio. He uh, he started what what, what they call uh, the Sokoto Caliphate. So under the Sokoto Caliphate, a lot of uh, uh, Yorubas and also many other tribes living uh, southern across the Beno River and Niger River were uh, were enslaved through Islam or jihad. So and to uh, for them to come uh, down. To, uh, to the western and eastern uh, part of uh, Nigeria, they had to cross the river with ships and enslave uh, the Yorubas and the other tribes and take them back to northern Nigeria with ships. And they had plantations, plantations in, uh, in the uh, Sokoto, uh, Sokoto Caliphate. Their names were changed. They gave them Muslim, uh, Muslim names and they were sold uh, in the trans saharan slave trade and transatlantic slave trade. So for him to come here and say uh, that Yorubas were not involved in, uh, were not sold in us in slavery is just, I don't know if he's lying or he's just ignorant. Yeah, thank you for that. You know, uh, we'll chalk it up with him just being ignorant. You know, hey, it is what it is. But uh, he knew that. He knew that. I know he knew that. He was just lying. I think he was either lying or, or ignorant, both ignorant or lying, one or the other, or both. He definitely knew that. But I thank you for the information. That was very, very informative. Our prisoners. Yes, yeah, so on that note, we'll close it down for tonight. And uh, follow the club at the top, Biblical Smoke, hashtag Biblical Smoke on Twitter to join the conversation. And uh, E or Isaac, you guys want to give any closing statements? Um, you, yeah, you, can um, let, you can let E go ahead. Yeah, uh, please, please get out of get out of these uh, pagan religions. Um, it's just ask. Uh, I've asked many, many uh, Arabs, many Syrians. I've spoken to Syrians, Iranians. I've spoken to Arabs, and I've asked them. Saudi Arabians. I've asked them. According to the Quran, who was the forefather of the Negroes, and they all give the same answer. Some lie and say, children of Abraham, some of them come close and say, Isaac, that's as far as they'll go. They're going to lie to you. This is what Muslims are trained to do, along with Christians. They're trained to lie to those who they enslaved or enslave um, presently. Keep that in mind. That's it. Isaac? Uh, yep, just like uh, Brother E just said, uh, commodities, religions, um, brothers and sisters. Uh, tonight's topic, we dealt with Islam. Um, you know, it's uh, 
It's not what God gave the children of Israel. God gave the children of Israel law, statutes, and commandments. Islam is the Arab's man religion, not the so-called black man here in America and scattered abroad through the diaspora. Let's come back to the one to the one true God so we could get up out of this place. And with that, we say good night. Shalom. All right. All praises to the Most High and all credit is due to the Most High. We'll see you tomorrow, Lord willing. We'll be back with another topic. And on that note, I'll let you do your follows. Again, follow the club, follow the folks on the stage, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. We do have a uh, another group called Upload God's Laws that'll be up uh, in the morning about 10, 30 a.m. Uh, Eastern time. Um, so check out for that as well if you see it in the hallway. Pop in and ask questions there too. And on that note, I guess I'll hit the Thanos button. Oops, I missed.